Are we ready? You should all have a bit of paper now. Now, my job, introduce myself. I'm Susan Gietzos. I'm Director of Learning and Teaching and Professor of Lifelong Learning at the Business School. My job that they've given me is to provide some big picture context and tune our minds in to the issues of technologies and assessment. And I was going to drone on about policies, practices, and trends, and you were going to practice your looking awake and interested <laughs> techniques, which I'm sure are really, really good already. But by some remarkable stroke of good fortune, you've all sat down next to someone who knows more than you about assessment. So we're going to do some talking to each other instead, I think. So I've got three or four slides. And usually, when people start talking, it's really hard to stop them. So when I start flossing, you have to stop talking. And I know you'll be so keen to watch me trying to floss that you will stop talking. OK? I'm putting myself out there now. All right. I, so I've only got three or four slides. Could you ever think about this one? Do a little brainstorm. Introduce yourself to your neighbors and do a brainstorm. See if you can get 10 ways that the business school could be using technologies to improve our assessments. <laughs> Would you like to move along? Would you, would you like to move along? <laughs> you should see my colleagues cringing now. Okay, folks. Did anyone get 10? Chan at the back's pretty close. He was my PhD student. Anyone get anyone that was a new thing to do? We don't know what you to do, so it's hard to know what we do. Oh. <laughs> anyone from the business school? Get anything new? Go on, Andrew. One of the things we were talking about is different types of assessments that are now possible. So, for example, because we use computers and exams and tests quite a lot in ISOM, we can actually get students to demonstrate that they can do stuff. So, ISOM was saying their assessments could be a lot more real because we can use computers in assessments instead of teaching them on a computer how to program and then asking them to write stuff down, which is ridiculous. Cool. Anything else that we could do that might be new? We reality. Using virtual reality so it can bring the outside world in to a kind of safe testing environment. Cool. Well done. Lovely. Most of the things you thought of are probably doing the same things but better. Yeah more efficiently, more cheaply to more people. Cool. Right, you can talk again. And when I floss, you have to stop. Less laughing this time. OK, I'm going to show you some trends. And I want you to have a chat, work out what they are, what you think they are, and then have a discuss which kind of trends are imposing on your practice or informing your practice. There you go. OK. Oh, it's gone wrong. OK. OK. Lovely. OK, which policies most are you feeling most? Someone over here? Which trends are you feeling most? I think uh, one of the trends that I'm feeling most is the burden of lecture time on assessment activities. So the time you have to spend on assessments going up. Any others? Question. <coughs> the grading arms race. The grading arms race is, um, it's a kind of Taylorism gone mad. So it's, I, they'll only do it if I assess them. So I have more assessments in my course. And then that course thinks, oh, I'll have to have more assessments in my course. So the students have been so over-assessed. 
So if you go and work in Europe now, you might have a university with a policy that there's two assessment points in each course. No more, because of this re arms race that's gone on. All right, so those are our trends. This is New Zealand. Trends? No, this is that's international literature, so some of these might not have come our way yet. Because I've seen some of these in the early 90s when I was teaching. Yeah. Including yeah. students who said, I don't want to know it if it's not going to be on the test. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And so our response is not to give them lots of tests and push them up to surface learning, but to engage in some of the kind of good practices over here. Those of you with an entrepreneurial spirit might have turned over your page and found this, which you can use. So what I'd like you to do is reflect on these good practices and give yourselves A's for three of them and B's for three of them and C's for three of them. I wonder what we do well and what we don't do so well. Cool. Oh, cool. All done. Nearly all done. Hello. Oh, beg pardon. Oh, you don't have one either. I'm so sorry. Oh, she got one. I meant you got one. Sorry. All right, folks. Anton's giving me my one minute signal. What are we really good at? Or what are you personally good at? What got A's? Anyone care to share? What did you put for A? What did you get A's in? Brilliant. They're probably the most important ones, aren't they? Brilliant. Anyone dare admit to what their C's are? No. Well, let's move on. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what your C's are. Now, I've only got one more slide. I read somewhere a little while ago um, that the truth is a bully that we pretend to like. And what I've tried to do in the last few slides is give you this big picture thinking and a, a particular truth. In our last session today, the students are coming in. And they're going to share some truths. And the literature tells us that their truth and our truth are not the same at all. And I think, rather than pretending to like this truth, we tend to ostracize that truth. So I'd really urge you to think about the things we've talked about just now, and, but also to integrate it with the things the students tell us. Thank you. <laughs>